Among the most alarming tweets from the president this weekend was this one. Quote, after years of Comey with the phony and dishonest Clinton investigation and more, running the FBI, its reputation is in tatters, worst in history. But fear not, we will bring it back to greatness, tweeted Trump. That brought about swift condemnation from folks who know the FBI best, from former acting Attorney General Sally Yates. Quote, the FBI is in tatters? No. The only thing in tatters is the president's respect for the rule of law. The dedicated men and women of the FBI deserve better. Then this from former AG Eric Holder. Nope, not letting this go. The FBI's reputation is not in tatters. It's composed of the same dedicated men and women who have always worked there and who do a great apolitical job. You'll find integrity and honesty at FBI headquarters and not at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Our panel's still here. Chairman Steele, the law and order president, uh, railing against um, what certainly sounds like every man and woman who serves in the FBI. Yeah, and the idea, uh, irrespective of those individuals who put their life on the line in serving uh, communities all across the country, irrespective of that, this is all about uh, how he wants to create a narrative around these institutions uh, of government uh, and our culture and society. And, and have them reshaped in his image, in his, in his uh, mind thought, if you will. People look at them the same way he does. So the idea started with the media. You know, now a significant number of Americans think that media is not good for America, that they're anti-American. Mm -hmm. And these other institutions are right in line behind that. And the only way it stops is if people just stop uh, ingesting the crazy mm -hmm. and push back on it and call it what it really is. The what FBI, is it? Well, the, what it is is a president who's unhinged when it comes to these things. He sees the world through his, through his perspective that's centered around one person and one person only. It's about him. It's not about the leadership of the FBI. It's not about the men and women. Let me, let me on push the back. Line. A former diplomat said to me yesterday that if an FBI agent, you know, heaven forbid, gets hurt, that, that this can be traced back to Donald Trump. I heard that from um, former diplomatic security who had worked in American embassies when he retweeted the anti Muslim videos. I've heard that from a lot of campaign reporters who were on the mm -hmm. road with him when they were screaming and spitting at the press pen. And, and I, I want to put up, I think we made a list of all the institutions and, and independent agencies he's attacked. It's the FBI, the Free Press, an independent judiciary, diplomats, including his own top diplomat, uh, Rex Tillerson. Um, I guess he called him a moron, so maybe that one stands equal. Congress, all the congressional mm -hmm. leaders, and political opponents like Hillary Clinton. And I want to read something from the New York Times today, which wrote in an editorial, quote, he's casting the men and women of the FBI as unreliable, if not worse, just as he has previously done with the CIA, with CIA agents, federal judges, scientists, congressional budget office analysts, and journalists, among others. The president wants to undercut just about anybody who is an independent source of information. It's a classic tactic of autocrats who people as people who have spent time in modern Russia China or Venezuela can tell you the attacks on institutions that check his power continue um, AB what do we do oh I don't know that answer for you Nicole. <laughs> um, I can tell you this I think that obviously in the campaign uh, his own supporters knew he has authoritarian impulses and voted for him anyway he won this election by 77,000 votes against you know, a very flawed candidate who I think skirted the law herself. Um, and here we are. But he continues to speak to a third of the country with a very passionate authoritarian um, style. And it, it, the courts, the Congress, the Constitution be damned uh, if it's the wrong day for any of those. Um, I will say that um, I can only imagine the Republican lawmakers that I have covered for all these years and know well, Michael, mm -hmm. um, how loudly they would be screaming if Barack Obama oh took off the, oh, after yeah. the FBI <laughs> and Eric Holder did not stand up for them. It is really quite a day for Jeff Sessions to be hiding in silence. Number one, it's but a number two, do. and I'm not sticking up for Comey, but this is something to think about. A year ago, The Guardian reported in November 2016 that the FBI was completely pro-Trump and anti-Hillary, and they thought she was a corrupt criminal. If you look back, the reason that Comey made all these mistakes and really sold his reputation was because because even though you're not supposed to comment on cases and you let them quietly die, he was terrified that leaks, particularly out of the New York FBI, would come out about him closing that case, which is why he gave the July 5th press conference. And then later, he had the October 11th, I think it was, uh, letter. Mm -hmm. Both times he stepped in it, 
because he was so terrified of his own political skin that later on leaks would come out yep. up from the FBI of people who were anti-Hillary. So at that time, obviously, the Trump campaign was very pro-FBI. But um, I think it's a really sad day for Jeff Sessions and Chris Wray at the FBI and the DOJ that they can't stick up for these men and women. Yeah, I mean, where are they? Where is Chris Wray? Where is Jeff Sessions? I mean, the, these, these men and women carry out missions directed by the director of the FBI, who was, I think, confirmed 100 to, to nothing. And let me just say, I mean, part of the reason we're here is also because of what you just said, that people thought that, that Hillary's private email server was the same as Donald Trump's assault on democracy. It is not. No. I mean, be, having autocratic impulses is not a, a right-left thing. It's just a bad thing. Right. And, and at this point, it, it's not autocratic impulses. It's autocratic goals. I mean, this is, this is the goal. I mean, we're, we're, we're all hanging by this thread that one day we won't have a Saturday Night Massacre. He's just going to get rid of Mueller anyway. And the Republicans in Congress will just kind of, you know, twiddle their thumbs and say, well, I guess we should have done something about it before it happened. Um, but th there's two things about this that I, I think are also problematic. It's not just attacking these institutions. It's not just attacking the press. It's not just saying that basically I am the law, right, that I, I can command everything one way or another. But it, it, it's this weird way that the president sort of turns all politics into this MC Escher painting where people are finding these strange alliances because now you've got liberals like cheering for the FBI, an organization that has consistently <laughs> gone after. for Jeff Sessions. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, and so people don't know who they can support because they know this is a dangerous president. So all of this, I, 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 it, it confuses public discourse, it endangers our democracy, and it makes it problematic to know who real allies are. Well, let me ask you, is there some silver lining there in making some of these institutions, our, dip, our top diplomats, our top cops, apolitical, simply sort of putting them on Team America and leaving Donald Trump over here uh, trying to get Vladimir Putin's abs. I mean, that, that might be the case if it wasn't such uh, damage being done. I mean, you have, look, Donald Trump, when he tweets and makes these statements, he has two audiences in mind, himself and his much most ardent supporters. He really doesn't care what other people think about them. He doesn't care what the effects of them are. Right. And if you have a, a substantial percentage of the American people who think that the FBI is a political organization that's just out to get them and it's corrupt and it's part of the swamp, if you have people, when he, when he tweeted those videos. I don't think he even considered what was that going to do to his Muslim ban case? What was that going to do to his relationship with the UK, one of our most important allies in the fight against or terror and American elsewhere? Or his American diplomats. Or his American diplomats. He doesn't think about any of that. He is pushing back, identifying an enemy who was a, a problem for him, and I don't think he cares about the consequences, or at the very least doesn't think about them. We could stop it. He doesn't think. But when we come back, going all in on Roy Moore, Donald Trump throws his full 